All right, enough show and tell. Let's get to business. So. In a nutshell, fundamental techniques in handling people. Principle one, don't criticize, condemn, or complain. Principle two, give honest and sincere appreciation. Principle three, arouse in others an eager want. But, um, in my summaries that we've, that we've written pretty much established that like just kind of kind of laying out like the, a simple um like we say this and then this is going to be the response right more, more often than not and then and then if somebody gives that response then you're already kind of fucking up because like they're on guard, they're on edge, they're not, they're not in the right frame of mind to start uh, even being uh, receptive to whatever you're saying, right? And to like lower that guard and to kind of ease in, into that would be to give honest and sincere appreciation. And then once, uh, and then once you have them like on your side, kind of, then 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 you can start to uh, plant the seeds of making the person want to do those things, right? But yeah, it's pretty neat, pretty neat. Part two, six ways to make people like you. Number one, do this and you'll be welcome anywhere. So I'm thinking, I don't know how long these are. I think these ones are a bit shorter to get through. So I'm not gonna do one at a time, probably do two at a time. Maybe, we'll see. Well, do this and you'll be welcome anywhere. Why read this book to find out how to win friends? Why not study the technique of the greatest winner of friends that the world has ever known? Who is he? You, you may meet him tomorrow coming down the street. When you get within 10 feet of him, he will begin to wag his tail. If you stop and pat him, he will almost jump out of his skin to show you how much he likes you. And you want and you know that behind this show of affection on his part, and you know that behind this show of affection on his part, there are no ulterior motives. He doesn't want to sell you any real estate. He doesn't want to marry you. Did you ever stop to think that a dog is the only animal that doesn't have to work for a living? <laughs> Cats too, right? I think it's, I don't know, it just depends, but. <laughs> a hen has to lay eggs, a cow has to give milk, and a canary has to sing. But a dog makes a living by giving you nothing but love. When I was five years old, my father bought a yellow, a little yellow haired pup for 50 cents. He was the light and joy of my childhood. Every afternoon after 4.30, he would sit in the front yard with his beautiful eyes staring steadily fast at, at the path. And as soon as he heard my voice or saw me swinging my dinner pail through the, the bucket brush, he was off like a shot, racing breathlessly up the hill to greet me with leaps of joy and barks of sheer ecstasy. Tipping was my constant companion for five years. Tippy. Then, one tragic night, I shall never forget it. He was killed within ten feet of my head. Wow. Killed by lightning. What the fuck? Tippy's death, <laughs> Tippy's death was a tragedy of my boyhood. You never read a book on psychology, Tippy. You didn't need to. You knew by some divine instinct that you can make more friends in two months by becoming genuinely interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. Let me repeat that. You can make more friends in two months by becoming genuinely in by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get people interested in you. True. Yet, I know, uh, I think recently in my life, I think in the past two months, like I've been instead of trying to get people generally interested in me, you know, being generally interested interested in others, and that has gone, gave me, gave, garnered me lots of friends, and lots of uh, uh, resources and networks, so, yeah, it's really true. Yet, I know, and you know, people who blunder through life to wigwag other people into becoming interested in them. Of course, it doesn't work. People are not inter interested in you. They are not interested in me. They are interested in themselves, morning, noon, and after dinner. The New York Telephone Company made a detailed study of telephone conversations to find out which word is the most frequently used. You have guessed it. It is a personal pronoun, I, I, I. It was used 3,900 times in 500 telephone conversations. I, 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 I. When you see a group photog photograph that you are in, 
whose picture do you look for first? If we merely try to impress people and get people interested in us, we will never have many true, sin sincere friends. Friends, real friends, are not made that way. Napoleon tried it, and in his last meeting with Josephine, he said, Josephine, I have been as fortunate as any man ever was on this earth, and yet, at this hour, you are the only person in the world who I, on whom I can rely. And historians doubt whether he could rely, he could even rely on her. Gosh. Adolf Adler, the famous Venetian psychologist, wrote a book entitled, What Life Should Mean to You. In that book, he says, it is the individual who is not interested in his fellow men who have, who has the greatest difficulties in life and provides the greatest injury to others. It is from among such individuals that all human feelings spur a spring. Read that again. It is the individual who is not interested in his fellow men who has the greatest difficulties in life and provides the greatest injury to others. It is from among such individuals that all human failures spring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You may read sources of erotic. Er, 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 right? Tomes. We, we, we use this word before. Right. I mean, I forget it though. Having or showing great knowledge or learning. Or write tomes on psychology without coming across a statement more significant for you and for me. Adler's statement is so rich with meaning that I am going to repeat it in italics. It is an individual who is not interested in his fellow men who has the greatest... Yeah? Uh, All right, the keys are in. Whatever. Why does it want to turn? Okay, where were we? It is the individual who is not interested in his fellow men who has the greatest difficulties in life and provides the greatest injury to others. It is from among such individuals that all human failures spring. I once took a course in short story writing at the New York University. And during that course, the editor of a leading magazine talked to our class. He said he could pick up any one of the dozens of stories that drifted across his desk every day and after reading a few paragraphs he could feel whether or not the author liked people <laughs> if the author doesn't like people he said people won't like his or her stories this hard-boiled editor stopped twice in the course of his talk or on fiction writing and apologized for preaching a sermon i am telling you he said the same things your preacher would tell you but remember you have to be interested in people if you want to be successful writer of stories if that is true of writing fiction, you can be sure it is true of dealing with people face to face. I spent an evening in the dressing room of Howard Thurston. The last time he appeared on Broadway, Thurston was an acknowledged dean of mag magicians. For 40 years, he had traveled all over the world, time again, creating illusions, mystifying audiences, and making people grasp and, uh, with astonishment. More than 60 million people have paid admission to his show. 
and he had made almost made two million in profit. I asked Mr. Thornston to tell me his the secret of his success. His schooling certainly had nothing to do with it, he, for he ran away from home as a small boy, became a hobo, rode in boxcars, slept in haystacks, begged his food from door to door, and learned to read by looking out of boxcars at signs along the, the railway. Did he have a superior knowledge of magic? No. He told me hundreds of books that had been written about the Germain and scores of people who knew as much about as it as he did. But he had two things that the other the others didn't have. First, his ability to put his personality across the footlights. He was a master showman. He knew human nature, everything he did, every gesture, every annotation of his voice. Every lifting of an eyebrow had had been carefully rehearsed in, in advance, and his actions were, t were timed to split seconds. But in addition to that, Thurston had a genuine interest in people. He told me that many magicians would look at the, at the audience and say to themselves, Well, there is a bunch of suckers out there, a bunch of hicks. I'll fool them all right, but Thornstone's method was totally different. He told me that every time he went on stage, he said to himself, I am grateful because these people come to see me. They make it possible for me to make a living in a very agreeable way. I'm going to give them the very best I, I possibly can. He declared he never stepped in front of, in front of the footlights without first saying to himself over and over, I love my audience. I love my audience. Ridiculous, absurd, you are privileged to think anything you like. I am really passing it on to you without comment as a recipe used by one of the most famous magicians of all time. George Dyke of North Warren, Pennsylvania, was forced to retrieve from re re retire from his service station business after 30 years when he when a hi new highway was constructed over the site of his station. It wasn't long before the Id idle days of retirement began to bore him, so he started filling his in the, his time trying to play music on his old fiddle. Soon, he was traveling the area to listen to music and talk with many of the accomplished fiddlers. In his humble and friendly way, he became generally interested in learning the background and interests of every magician he met. Although he was not a great fiddler himself, he made many friends in, his, in this pursuit. He attended competitions and soon became known to the country music fans in the eastern part of the United States as Uncle George. The fiddler scrapper from Kinzua County. Huh. When he when we heard Uncle George, he had 62 and enjoying. When we heard Uncle George, he was 62 and enjoying every minute of his life. By having a sustained interest in other people, he created a new life for himself. At a time when most people consider their productive years over, that too was one of the secrets of Theodore Roosevelt's astonishing popularity. Even his servants loved him. His velvet. James E. Omson wrote a book about his entitled Theodore Roosevelt, his hero to his valet. A valet? Yeah. A man's personal male attendant, responsible for his clothes and appearance. Oh, valet. Okay, I, I, yeah. In that book, I almost related this illuminating incident. My wife one time asked the president about if Bob White. He had never seen one, and he described it to her fully. Sometime later, the telephone at our cottage rang. Almost, and his wife lived in the little cottage on the Roosevelt Estate at Oyster Bay. My wife answered it, and it was Mr. Roosevelt himself. He had called her, he said, to tell her that there was a Bob White outside her window, and that if she would like out, and if she would look out, he might see it. Little things like that were so char characteristic of him. Whenever he went by our cottage, even though we were out of sight, we would hear him call out, Ooh, Annie, or Ooh, James. <laughs> it was just a friendly greeting as he went by. How could employees keep from liking him? <laughs> How can employees keep from liking a man like that? How could anyone keep from liking him? Roosevelt called out at the White House one day when the president and Miss Taft were away. His honest liking for humble people was shown by the fact that he greeted all the old White House servants by name, even the Scully maids. When he saw Alice, the kitchen maid, writes Archie Butt. Uh huh. When he saw Alice, the kitchen maid, writes Archie Butt, he asked her if she still made cornbread. 
Us told him that she sometimes made it for the servants, but no one ate it upstairs. They show bad taste, Roosevelt boomed. And I'll tell the president, and so so when I see him. Ilus brought a piece to him on a plate, and he went over to the office eating it as he went and greeting gardeners and laborers as he passed. He addressed each person just as he had addressed them in the past. Ike Hoover, who had been head usher of the White House for 40 years, said, with tears in his eyes, it is the only happy day we had in nearly two years, and, I, and not one of us would exchange it for a $100, uh, $100 bill. The same concern for the seemingly unimportant people at Help sales representatives Edward M. Skies, Jr. of Charlotte Chatham. Chatham, New Jersey, retain an accountant. Many years ago, he reported, I called on customers from Johnson & Johnson in the Massachusetts area. One account has was a drugstore in Hingham. Whenever I went into this, this store, I would always talk to the soda clerk and sales clerk for a few minutes before talking to the owner to obtain his order. One day, I went up to the owner of the store. He told me leave as he was not interested in buying J&J products anymore because he felt they were cons then considering their activities on food and dis discount stores to the dis determinant of the small drug store. I left with my tail between my legs and drove around the town for several hours. Finally, I decided to go back and try at least to explain our position to the owner of the store. When I returned, I walked in as usual and said hello to the soda clerk and sales clerk. When I walked up to the owner, he smiled at me and welcomed me back. He then gave me a double, gave me double the usual order. I looked at him with surprise and asked him what had happened since my visit only a few hours earlier. He pointed to the young man at the soda fountain and said that after I had left, the boy had came over and said that I was one of the few salespeople that called out the store that even bothered to say hello to him and to the other stores. To the others in the, in the store, he told the owner that if any salesperson deserved his business, it was I, the owner who agreed and remained a loyal customer. I never forgot that to be genuinely interested in other people's is a most important equal, a quality for a salesperson to possess, for any person for that matter. I have discovered from personal experience that one can win the attention and time and cooperation of even the most sought after people by becoming genuinely interested in them. Let me illustrate that. Or let me illustrate. Years ago, I conducted a course in fiction, ri fictional ri writing at the Brooklyn Institute of Arts and Sciences, and we wanted such distinguished and busy authors as Kathleen Norris, Benning Hest, Ida Tarbell, Albert Payson, Tara Hune, and Robert Huggis Huges, to come to Brooklyn and to give the, us the benefit of their exper experiences. So we wrote them. When we ad admired their work and we deeply enjoyed and we were deeply so sorry. Then we admired the work and we were deep, deeply interested in getting their attend their advice and learning the secrets of their success. Each of these letters oh, each of these letters was signed by all, all, about a hundred and fifty students. We said we realized that these authors were busy, too busy to prepare a lecture, so we enclosed a list of questions for them to answer by, about themselves and their methods of work. They liked that. Who wouldn't like that? So they left their homes and traveled to Brooklyn to give us a helping hand. By using the same method, I persuaded Leslie M. Shaw, Secretary of the Treasury in Theodore Roosevelt's cabinet, George W. Wickersman, Attorney General in Taft's cabinet, William Jennings Byron, Franklin D. Roosevelt, and many other prominent men to come to talk to the students of my courses in public speaking. All of us, be we workers in a factory, clerks in an office, or even a king upon his throne, all of us like people who admire us. Take the German Kaiser for example. At the close of at the close of World War One, he was probably the most savagely and universally despised man on this earth. Even his own nation turned against him when he fled over the into Holland to save his neck. The hated the hatred against him was so ins insistent that millions of people would love have loved to tear him limb from limb and or burn him at the stake. In the midst of all this forest fire and fury, a uh, one little boy wrote to, wrote wrote the Kaiser a simple, sincere letter glowing with kindness and admiration. This little boy said that no matter what the others thought, he would always love William as his emperor. The Kaiser was deeply touched by his letter and invited the little boy to come see him. The boy came, so did his mother, and the Kaiser married her. That little boy didn't need to read a book on how to win friends and influence people. He knew how, how instinctively. 
if we, if we want to make friends, let's put ourselves to do things for other people. Things that require time, energy, unselfishness, and thoughtfulness. When the Duke of Windsor was Prince of Wales, he was scheduled to tour South, Africa, South America. And before he started out on that tour, he spent months studying Spanish so that he could make public talks in the language of the country. And the South Americans loved him for it. For years, I made it a point to find out the birthdays of my friends. How? Although I have the foggiest bit of faith in astrology, I began by asking the other party whether he believed in the day of one's birth has anything to do with character and disposition. I then asked him or her to tell me the month and day of birth. If he or she said November 24th, for example, I kept repeating to myself, November 24th, November 24th. The minute my friend's back was turned, I wrote down the name and birthday and later would transfer it to a birthday book. After it, at the beginning of each year, I had these birthday dates scheduled in my calendar pad so that they came to my attention automatically. When the natural day arrived, there was my, my letter and, or, or telegram. When a hit is... Okay. What a hit it made. I was frequently the only person on earth who remembered. If we want to make friends, let's greet people with an, an animation and enthusiasm. When somebody calls you on the telephone to use the, the same psychology, Say hello in tones that best speak how pleased you are to have the other person call. Many companies train their telephone operators to greet all, cellular, all callers in, the, in a tone of voice that radiates interest and enthusiasm. The caller feels the company is concerned about them. Let's remember that when we answer the telephone tomorrow, showing a genuine interest in others not only wins friends for you, but you may develop in customers, may develop in its customers a loyalty to your company. In an issue of the publication of the National Bank of North America of New York, the following letter of Mudlane Rosedale, a, disposter, a, a depositor, was published. I would like you to know how much I appreciate your staff. Everyone is so courteous, polite, and helpful. With the pleasure it is, after waiting on a waiting on a long line to have the teller greet you pleasantly. Last year, my mother was hospitalized for five months. Frequently, I went to Marie Pertolicolu, a teller. She was concerned about my mother and inquired about her progress. Is there any doubt that Miss Rosedale was continued to use this bank? This bank? Or is there any doubt that Miss Rosedale will continue to use this bank? Charles R. Walters of one of the largest banks in New York City was assigned the preparation a confidential report on a certain corporation. He knew of only one person who possessed the f the facts that he needed to sort urgently, as Miss. Mr. Walters was ushered into the president's office. A young woman stuck her head through a door and told the president that she didn't have any stamps for him that day. I was collecting stamps for my 12-year-old son. The president explained to Mr. Walters. Mr. Walters st stated his mission and began asking questions. The president was vague, general, nebulous. He didn't want to talk. And apparently, nothing could persuade him to talk. The interview was brief and barren. Frankly, I didn't know what to do, Mr. Walters said and he, as he related the story to his, the class. Then I remember what his secretary had said to him, stamps, five year old son. And as I re recalled that the foreign department of our bank collected stamps, stamps taken from letters pouring in from every con continent washed by the seven seas. The next afternoon, I called on this man and sent in word that I had some stamps for his boy. Was I ushered in with enthusiasm? Yes, sir. He couldn't have shaken my hand more enthusiastically if he had been running for Congress. His radiated smile of and goodwill. Mr. George will love this one. He kept saying as he fondled the stamps and looked at this. This is a treasure. He, we spent half an hour talking stamps and looking at the pictures of his boy. And then he devoted more than an hour of his time to giving me every bit of information I wanted without my, my even suggesting that he do it. He told me all that he knew and then called in the subordinates and questioned them. He telephoned some of his associates. He loaded me down with facts, figures, reports, and correspondence. In the, par in the parlous, of newspaper reporters, I had a scoop. Here is another illustration. One, he kept saying as he found out the stamps and looked at this, this treasure, okay. Oh yeah, right here. here's another illustration. C.M. Canfell Jr. of Philadelphia had tried for years to sell fuel to a large chain store organization, but the chain store con company continued to purchase its fuel from an outright out of town dealer in a and haul it right past the door of Kepler's office. Mr. Kepler made a speech one night before one of my classes pouring on his hot wrath upon chain stores, branding them as a curse to the nation. 
And still, he won he wondered why he couldn't sell them. I suggest that he tried different tactics. To put in briefly, this is what, what this is what happened. We staged a debate between members of the of the of the course and on whether the spread of chain stores is doing the country more harm than good. Kefler, at my suggestion, took the negative to the side. He agreed to defend the chain stores and then went straight to an executive of the chain store or organization that he despised and said, I am not here to try to sell fuel. I'm here to ask you to do me a favor. And he then t told about his debate and said, I have come to you for help because I can't think of anyone else who would be more cap capable of giving me the facts I want. I'm anxious to win this debate and I'll deeply appreciate whatever help you can give me. Here is the rest of the story in Mr. Kepler's own words. I had asked this man for precisely one minute of his time. It was with th that understanding that he consented to me. He consented to see me. After I had started, stated my case, he mentioned me to a chair. Oh, he motioned me to a chair and talked to me for exactly one hour and 47 minutes. He called in another executive who had written a book on chain stores. He wrote to the National Chain Store Association and secured for me a copy of a debate on the subject. He feels that the chain stores is rendering a real service to humanity. He is proud of what he is doing for hundreds of communities. His eyes fairly glowed as he talked. Faintly glow, fairly, faintly, fairly glowed as he talked. And I must confess that he opened my eyes to things I had never ever dreamed of. He changed my whole mental attitude. As I was leaving, he walked with me to the door, put his arm around my shoulder, wished me well in my debate, and asked me to stop in and see him again and let him know how I, oh no, I, let him know how I made out. The last words he said to me were, Please, see me again in this ring. I should like to place an order with you for fuel. To me, that was, the most, well, it was almost a miracle. Here he was offering to buy fuel without me even suggesting it. I may have made more headway in two hours by becoming genuinely interested in him and his problems than I could have made in ten years trying to get him interested in me and my product. You didn't discover a truth. A new truth, Mr. Kepler, for a long time ago, a hundred years before Christ was born, a famous old Roman poet, a publicis serious, remarked, We are interested in others when they are interested in us. A show of interest, as with every other principle of human relations, must be sincere. It must pay off, not only for the person showing the interest, but for the person receiving the attention. It is a two-way street. Both parties benefit. Martin Jensburg who took our course in Long Island, New York, reported how the special interest a nurse took in him profoundly affected his life. It was a Thanksgiving day, and I, and I was 10 years old. I was in a welfare ward for a city hospital and was scheduled to undergo major orthopedic surgery. The next day, I knew that I could only look forward to months of confinement, con, convales, convalescent, what does this mean? Time spent recovering from an illness or medical treatment on valsilience in pain my father was dead my mother and i lived alone in a small apartment and we were off fit, we were on a welfare my mother was unable to visit me that day as the day went on i became overwhelmed with the feeling of loneliness despair and fear i knew my mother was home alone worrying about me not having anyone to be with not having anyone to eat with and not having enough money to afford a thanksgiving day dinner the tears welled up in my eyes, and I stuck my head under the pillow and pulled the covers of, over it. I cried silently, but oh so bitterly, so much that my body racked with pain. A young student, nurse, heard my, heard my sobbing and came over to me. She took the covers off my face and started wiping my tears. She told me how lonely she was having to work that day and not being able to be with her family. She asked me whether I would have dinner with her. She brought two trays of food, sliced turkey, mashed potatoes, cranberry sauce, and ice cream for dessert. She talked to me and tried to calm my fears. Even though she was scheduled to go off duty at 4 p.m., she stayed on her own time until almost 11 p.m. Played games with me, talked to me, with, with, talked to me, and stayed with me until I finally fell asleep. Many Thanksgivings have come and gone since I was 10, but one never passed without me remembering the particular one on my feelings of frustration, fear, loneliness, and the warmth and tenderness of the stranger that somehow made it all bearable. If you want others to like you, if you want to develop real friendship, if you want to help others at the same time as you help yourself, keep this principle in mind. Principle one, become generally interested in other people. Hey, what's up? Okay. Uh, all right. 
So become generally interested in other people. Let's see. Hmm. I'll write the summary now. That was sick. That was sick. How long was that chapter? It's, it's a bit shorter. My throat's kind of sore from smoking. Um. Hmm. So, I think the lesson to be learned is that uh, being uh, genuine and having a sincere interest in somebody else. Um, sets you up for like a long-term friendship or like a back and forth that can be beneficial for you and the individual right and and the ways you go about it is like lots of little things that um that communicate your interests and communicates the, the genuinity that you're trying to get across right so um I guess I'll write something on how to become genuine. I mean, genuine is genuinely interested in. Um, one else requires attentivity, requires being attentive, requires, um, effort, um, There's effort, uh, creativity, and selflessness. Um, so, for me, how I do this is, uh, I think the easiest way for everybody to do this, the easiest way, is. Um, Whenever somebody po like passes your mind, right? You just you tell them. So I think for me, um, like I had a dream. Somebody was asking me about shower advice, and I told them I was like, "Hey, man, you good?" I had a dream that you're asking me about shower advice and making checking up on you. They're like, "Oh yeah, man, yeah, I'm good." And like, I think that goes a long way. And and it's hard to communicate the emotion or the response that it inv invokes to someone to the to, to to the to the other person, right? Um, but I know that the effects of that goes a long ways, goes a long ways into not only like their mood or their, their overall day, but, um, a long ways for our relationship in and of itself. And, and that's something that is kind of creative and it takes some effort, right? Not really selfless, but it takes some effort. Um, or something selfless would be, um, um, like you pick up someone's trash or something, right? Or you offer like just some of your time to make someone else's life that much more uh, bearable or easier, right? They're so bad. But can't find my pink cat either. All these valuable things are just disappearing around me. Yeah, this one's gonna be short. My throat's kind of hurting because of smoke. I won't do it again then. I probably will, but not as heavy as I did it. Um, it's just been a long time, but it's good. It's good to feel that I don't have any like uh, effects. You know, I can just do it and have fun and not worry about it anymore. Uh, so let's describe effort. The kind of efforts. Um, efforts. Um, 
uh, organizing organizing uh, the things that would be important to uh, person so you oh no, so you can't just be the do this So for example remembering specific dates or or events <laughs> is a nuisance and I just took her out and did everything I don't know what she could possibly need what do you need okay um What's next? Let's get the heck out of here. And then, um, I think that's a big thing, like being able to organize yourself in a way where, uh, so you remember birthdays, so you, um, you remember the person's name, right? So, so you remember, um, Uh, the events or something that's important to this person or you're able to keep up with this person right like putting like information down like that or or uh or, or making making it so you have time set aside to do these things for these people is really important and that takes effort right Lay in my lap then toast Wow. And then uh, creativity. Creativity. Um, being able to put enough. Thought into that person so you can do something very unique. And then see her. Um, example. So, what would be something that's creative that you would like someone for to do for you? Hmm. Something unique and creative, huh? So I think I was um, at like a gathering, like a friend gathering, and one of the people there that I didn't know at the time um, said it was their birthday, and they didn't, and that, 
Uh, they didn't get a cake or anything, you know, just chilling. But it's a birthday, they're not doing anything. They don't really care. So they hang out with us. It's nice. And so I made, uh, I just made them a cake. I, just put, I connected the dots and made them a cake. And that was cool. Um. Here. Someone. That's it. Yeah, like I just surprised him. I was like, hey, like, hey, yeah, yeah, so make a cake and like, I don't know, go look. And I just put the other real quick and busted it out and then got it to him. Pretty cool. And, and that goes like a long ways as well. It's a really nice thing to do. Um, and the selflessness, right? How do you be, how does one be selfless? Um, doing acts for others that have, that are, that is clearly no benefit to yourself, right? Doing, oh, full well, acts for others that have that has no have or has has no clear benefit to yourself yeah there you go that's good okay so so, for example, would be hmm. oh, um, I remember I was with um my friend's mom, and uh, cause uh, I need to get something from his house, but he's like he works like twenty four hour shifts. He's crazy guy and uh, I need like this thing from his car from coming back from the trip and his mom helped help me a lot uh, to like look for everything really, really thoroughly and uh, basically I mean, it's, it's like uh, and then after, after um, she was getting all, all the packing paper that was in the car and then putting it in a bag and then I, I helped her get all the packing paper and put it in the car even though like I was gonna go somewhere and do something else or I was already on my way out I was like oh, I'll copy with this and that was pretty selfless right Oh, and that goes a long way, I think. Um, I was just say helping someone pick up trash, because honestly, that's like a very selfish thing to do. And that's really good. And then, uh, yeah, and then um, recently, these two um, people, or these two families, right? Um, like my friends are good to me and I'm good to them, but like their parents are also really good to me. So like I, I just bought, um, what is it? Like right here. <sighs> like. <sighs> yeah, I got one of these. So now they got K-Cups. I got one of these. They're just really nice to me. And they give me just like you know, like a lot, very, very generous, very, like a lot of hospitality, right? So I think I just want to give back, and that'll be one of my ways of giving back. Is you know, like something small, something simple. Show like, yeah, like, I appreciate all the things you you've done for me, and I, and I'm grat I'm grateful, and I want to show that. Um, yeah, something like that goes a long ways. I, I did. I already gave one to um, the other, the one family. I'm gonna give one to the other one. I want, I want maybe today, hopefully. Uh, I gotta think about my errands I gotta do, and hopefully I can incorporate that into what I want to do. Yeah, we'll see. Alright, let's read my summary. 
Becoming genuinely interested in someone else requires effort, creativity, selflessness. Effort organizes the things that would be important to the person, to that person. Example, remembering specific dates or events. Uh, creativity, being able to put enough thought into that person so you can do something very unique and sincere. Example, hearing someone isn't doing anything for their B-Day, make them a cake. Selflessness, doing helpful acts for other pe for others that has no clear benefit to yourself. Example, helping someone pick up trash. Yeah, you know, I think, and then all these things go a long way into um, building up a repertoire, building up a connection or relationship, or kind of like a instant, like like a, like you you are willing to do favors for this person, and you willing to go out of your way for this person, and your sincere genuinity interest in them. Um, the way, the way that makes them feel, right? It's It, it makes them want to kind of give back to you in a way. As, as you've seen in all the in, in the literature that we just read, uh, like a, a lot of the ending of it was like uh, the giving back of, right? But yeah, that's pretty sick. Um, I think we made pretty good on time again. Uh, the summary took a little bit longer because I feel like there's a bit more to digest or there's a bit more to illustrate here.